Hi friends, um, today we're going to talk a little bit about changing colors of an object. I had a client who wasn't able to get his cap and gown due to COVID-19, but still wanted to do some senior portraits. And um, a friend of his happened to have a gown that was the color of his friend's high school. And we were able to, uh, the client's asked if we could change the color of the gown and I happened to know some tricks about changing color on gowns so I told him to go ahead and borrow his friend's cap and gown. So um, the colors, the easiest way to do this is if the colors are on the same tone uh, and I don't think that's the right word, saturation maybe is a better word. I can't take a deep purple as easily and make it a pastel, um, I don't know, a pink would be a little bit harder. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to go from a, a deep purple to a sort of a burgundy maroon color. Um, the first step we're going to do is come into our adjustments panel and click on the hue and saturation. And then down here, it pulls up this properties box. Um, you can see that if we play with some of these sliders, it gives us some interesting colors. But what we want is obviously to keep his skin tones the same. We're going to colorize. We're going to click on the box that says colorize. Um, then as we play, it's a little less uh, tweaky. Um, so we're going to, like I said, we're going to try to bring it to a burgundy. So we're just going to kind of play with our with our levels here, uh, obviously reds are on this end, blues in the middle, yellows, it's pretty, pretty basic. Um, and I want it pretty red. I'm going to go about 358. Um, and it's still not as deep. It's almost more of a grade red. So we're going to increase the saturation of the color. Um, I've learned when I'm playing around in Photoshop, especially when I was first starting out, it was easier to see what changes I was making if I was able to make those changes in an extreme. So if I were to play with saturation and I took it from a 48 to a 49 or, you know, something close to that, it's kind of hard to do with my graphics tablet. It's a little bit harder to see the difference that's happening in such a small amount of change. So I would drag my slider from one extreme to the other to make sure that I could see exactly what changes were happening. So I'm going to bring my saturation down a tiny bit, right to about here, I think. Um, and then my lightness, same kind of thing. If we go from one extreme to another, you can see what it's doing to the image. Um, and I'm going to bring it just to about, about here. Um, maybe even a little bit darker, maybe 10. Um, it's supposed to be a darker burgundy, maybe even an 8. So there we go. Done, right? No, wrong. Obviously wrong. It brings us down here, gives us a, another layer, which below our layer is our original picture. The benefit of layers is I can make any changes on a separate layer and my original picture is still intact. Um, when you're playing with layers that have a mask on them, that's this square here to the right, white reveals black conceals. Those are the two things or the, the one word of wisdom. I don't know that you're going to want to remember. Um, so if you hit control I, it's concealing the change. This is black, black conceals. It's concealed the changes that we've just made. White revealed, black concealed. So we're going to go with this. Then we're going to switch over to our wand W. If you just click on W or you can come over here, click on it here. And we are going to select the purple in the gown. And what this wand does, it is a great selection tool, is it's going to be constantly learning as you drag it around. It knows not to select the fingers just because as we're dragging around, it's learning what it wants to select. Now here, oh no, it selected the fingers. So we're going to Alt and then deselect the fingers. You can zoom in. I think my 
computer just froze. There we go, we froze for a minute. Um, so we're going to go in and just fine tune the fingers. We definitely don't want his fingers burgundy. And so this little wand tool, you can see it as you select thinking and then re shaping its lines. So if we were to come in here closer on this purple, it's thinking for a minute and then it's just learning what you want selected and it's kind of fine tuning itself. And this little finger here, I'm going to be okay with leaving it purple because you're not going to see it. Um, select the other side. Again, it selected his hand, but look, it left these fingers. So we're going to come in here and we're going to deselect this hand. We're gonna, I'm hitting Alt as I'm dragging my wand. Alt, click, will deselect something and Shift, click, or you don't even have to hit Shift, just clicking will add to your selection. So there's, it also added our tie up here. We need to deselect the tie, so we're gonna hit Alt. And it's a little, it's gonna be a little trickier to learn the tie because there's so many patterns and it's, you can see that it's trying to find similarities in color and texture and pattern, then obviously the tie is going to be a little bit harder. You can make your wand bigger by hitting the open bracket. That would be my Knight Rider. <laughs> my ringtone from my husband. So we're just going to slowly round the tie. Now, another benefit without having to use the wand, this is such a clean cut edge that we can actually come in and use a different kind of a tool to deselect it. It's such a straight line. Again, you can hit Alt and kind of come down and deselect it like this. And the benefit of this way of changing the colors is that it doesn't have to be as perfect because you can go back and fine tune a little bit as you're brushing and working on your mask. But we just want to make sure that we don't make all of the tie red. We'll come in and close that up. There we go. So we can kind of see there's the shape that we want to turn burgundy. Um, if we zoom in again, we look at the edges, you can see that, oh, it's pretty good, but a lot of times it doesn't quite go clear out to the edge just because the edge tends to um, fade out, you know, your blur a little bit. So I like to modify my selection and expand it by one pixel just to make sure I'm including everything that's purple. So you kind of see that it increased a little bit there. Um, so before we do the high, I just want to show you, we're going to hit B for brush, or you can come over to your tool and hit brush. And we're going to have our opacity pretty high, I would even say 100, and then oh, it doesn't like 0% opacity, it likes 100. And then we're just going to paint within that selection we just made. It doesn't matter if we go over here because it's only going to change that color within the selection we just made. We're gonna make our little dancing ants disappear and that looks pretty great. So let's continue on. We're gonna select the hat. We're gonna go back to W or wand and select the hat. Come down and select this other corner here and I'm not going to worry too much about the tassel right now because I'm gonna show you a different technique with the tassel. And we're going to paint the hat. Now here's a good example of why I increase my edge. You can see come down here, this edge here where the purple didn't quite get changed to purple. If I take the dancing ants away, you can see that. So it's not too late to go through and select, modify, and expand by one pixel. And if I, especially right here, I still feel like we're missing a pixel, you can go in and keep it until, until you feel like it's enough, but I'm going to change the brush and paint it back in. 
there we go. And if we get rid of the dancing ants, I feel like we've got a pretty good image there. Now we got to get rid of the purple in his tie and the purple in his tassel. And instead of making a selection and being so fine tuned about these, we're just going to use our brush. Oh, we have to deselect where, because when I did that, we forgot that our hat was still selected. So it's only going to change the color within the selection. We're just going to kind of paint. The black doesn't pick up as much and neither does white. If I were to paint over here, it's obvious. But if we were to go and overlap it a little bit, it's just not going to show up as much. So we don't have to be as absolutely perfect on the whites and the blacks. And it's such a small area that it won't matter. I'm trying to remember to talk louder and more clearly. And then the tassel. Sometimes my computer's freezing up today. And we're going to do it the same way we did the diamonds in his tie. And at this point, we're so zoomed in, we could see that that was red. So all I did was switch my color over here because if black conceals, black conceals here as well. Anytime I want to conceal a change that I made and bring it back to the original color, I paint black on the top. So when that had accidentally gotten some red on it, I, all I had to do is change my brush back to black and paint back the original color. Um, but to make the change, we want white. And we're just going to paint it over the top of the black. And just very, it's such a small piece that we're changing. And if you go over the edge a little bit, you just switch your color back here on your palette. Remembering white reveals. We want it to reveal the change that we made, and black conceals the change that we made. And that change that we made was changing the color to burgundy. Larger the brush, for the larger pieces. to a small little there we go so we took our original image that was in purple and we gave him his darker burgundy maroon colored gown without having him to come back and reschedule a session that was kind of our other option was waiting to see if he could get his gown and shooting another session so let's really quickly, I'm going to flatten that, and we're going to come in and just finish this edit using my healing brush patch tool. We're just going to fix those fun little teenage blemishes that we've all dealt with. I'm going to run a quick sharpening, run a quick version of portraiture. These are all set up in my actions, so you're seeing it happen and those are those are a lesson for another day but these actions are what I'm doing a quick sharpen a quick portraiture uh, these are color balance correction actions that I've created to make my editing quicker and then added a quick contrast and we're done thank you for joining us if there's any questions go ahead and leave them in the comments below and we'll discuss those questions